Hello, I hope this video finds you well. Um, this is response to a question that someone posted on my channel. Um, and thank you for the question. I haven't made a video in a while, let alone a uh, Java based video, so it's fun to get back to this. And the question was essentially how do I write a function that returns a transpose of a matrix of two dimensional array of integers? And the first thing is to understand what a transpose is. So a transpose is when you take um, the array and you swap the rows and columns. So we see here, if we see the first row is one, two, three, the transpose, that one, two, three in the first row is going to become the column one, two, three. Four, five, six is the second row, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, seven, eight, nine. So what we need to do is to take each index of, of each element and swap the row and column essentially. Because notice if we take, for example, this six, which is at row one and column zero, one, two, Right, zero, 1, there's my row, zero, 1, 2, there's my column. Um, that's going to move to row 0, 1, 2 and column 1. And so you see how we swap those indexes. And we can see an example here of a transpose where I have um, three rows and two columns, and the resulting transpose matrix is going to have two rows and three columns. All right, so to start off, we're going to write a function, so it's going to be public, static, and it's going to return a two-dimensional array of integers, and we're going to call it transpose. And I'm going to take a two-dimensional array of integers called ARR. Now, what I'm not going to do in this example is I'm not going to try and actually change the, the array itself. And it wouldn't really make sense to do that for a variety of reasons, but Partly I want to say this because you at least have to be very careful if you're going to change um, a reference type that has been passed in as a parameter because any changes persist after the function. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a new two-dimensional array called result. And now the first question is, what are the dimensions that I'm going to give it? Look at me, I'm kind of rusty with my notation. Well, what we can see is that, well, if we have a 3 by 3 the result is a 3 by 3 if we have a 3 by 2, we get a 2 by 3. And what you notice is that the rows and columns, the lengths are swapping. So I'm going to make the number of rows equal to ARR at 0. So I'm going to take the first row, and I'm going to get the length of the first row to get the length of the columns. And I'm going to say AR dot, AR dot length, which is going to give me the number of rows. So this means the number of columns in the first row is going to become the new number of rows, and the number of rows is going to become the new number of columns. And now what we're going to do is we're going to loop through ARR in row major format. Now I use row major format because anyone writing the IV exam, um, they'll talk about row major, they'll talk about row major and column major. And so what row major is, is when you write a loop to move across the rows in sequence, like that. So you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Column major is when you move down the columns. So 1, 4, 7, 2, 5, 8, 3, 6, 9. And it's just terminology to know, but it's the same idea. What we do is we write a nested loop structure. So we're going to say 4 r equals 0. And I'm, oh, again, too much JavaScript. 4 int r equals 0. And we're going to loop as long as r is less than arr at 0 dot length. And this essentially takes the length of the first row. Now, just to be really clear, I'm assuming, obviously, a, a rectangular shaped array. And um, I haven't done any, any error checking. The precondition of this is that we have a valid array. And now I'm going to say r is less than, sorry, r is equal to r plus 1. So what this is going to do is it's going to loop through each, each row. And then I'm going to enter each row. And then before I leave that row, I'm going to go through each column. So I'm going to say 4. Well, that's totally wrong. ar.length is going to give me the number of rows, part of me. I'm not going to restart this video. And then I'm going to say 4 int c equals 0. And now I'm going to say, I'm going to say, we're going to loop as long as c is less than ar at 0.length. Because each row has the same number of columns. And so if I just take the number of columns in the first row, that will be fine. And then I'm going to say c is equal to c plus 1. Now, someone's going to say to me at some point, can't write C++, and yes, you can. I just tend not to use the shorthand rotation. Now, all I'm going to do right now, I'm just going to go system.println um, AR at R, C, 
Actually, let's do system.print. And then we'll just put a here for a second plus comma. And then we'll system.print line. And let me just show you what happens here. So we're going to print out each element at RC. And then we're going to print out a new line after each row. And so what we're going to get now is if I take this and I'm just going to make an int um, result equals, and I'm going to say transpose, and I'm going to pass it A. Okay. Transpose. Why does it like that? Oh, because there's an error here. What's my problem? Oh, I have to return result. Silly me. There we go. That should solve everything. Whew. And this has to be a two dimensional array. Look at how I'm out of practice. So right now it doesn't do what we want, but what it's going to do is print it out. So if I run this now, what you're going to see, and we're going to proceed. Notice I get I get the rows because what's happening is R is going to start up at zero, and that's going to go zero, and then C is going to go zero one two. So we get one two three. R is one zero one two. R is two zero one two. But that's not what I want to do. Now remember what we're doing to transpose is we take the row and column, the position, and swap it. So I'm going to take result at and I'm going to say CR and so what I'm doing is I'm swapping the column in the row here and I'm going to say that's equal to ARR at RC and so what I've done here is I've taken ARR at RC and I've put it into result at CR and I'm essentially now populating taking that that row and then putting it down the column and so now if I run this I get nothing because I'm not printing anything out but what I can do is I can, once I'm done here, I can print this out. So, you know, the, we could print this out a couple ways. I really like when I'm quickly printing out two-dimensional arrays, um, is I like to make a loop for int i equals zero. i is less than result.length. So we're going to loop through the number of rows. I'm going to say i is equal to i plus one. And I'm going to say system.out.println. And I'm going to use a static function called toString. And I'm going to pass, print out result at R. So why do I do this often with student? Oh, that should be erased. Why do I often do this? And we have to import this. There it is. Ooh, um, it's been a while. Um, I do this because, oh, why does it like that? Result at, oh, because I'm putting I every time. Let's change this to R because I'm, I'm going to change it to R because I'm doing the number of rows. There it is. Pardon me. And I run this now. Let's get the whirl. There you go. I get my transpose. So what it's doing is it's taking, I like this technique because what you're doing is you're just looping through each row, but what you're doing is arrays.toString. This is a quick way to print out a one-dimensional array without using a loop. Um, so if you pass it a one-dimensional array, it just prints it out in a nice format. And because you can access, when you access a two-dimensional array at R like this, you're going to grab that entire row as a one-dimensional array really useful technique. Um, I think a number of years ago when I used to teach AP computer science, this was actually in a question where they really wanted to check that you understood how to take a one, take a, take a single one dimensional array from a two dimensional array. Lots of good stuff in here. Anyways, that's it. I hope that helped. I realized this was kind of quick, um, but please feel free to ask me questions. I hope that helped. Oh, actually, before I go, let me prove to you this works by running it through with B. So let's take this code and let's copy this. Let's do a system print line just to get a little space. And we're going to paste this. And of course, I'm going to just overwrite result. And we're going to pass this B now. And we're going to give it a whirl. And there we go. One for There's my transpose of A. There's my transpose of B. I hope this helped. Have a wonderful day.